Ms. Artastic and my friend! Welcome back to the Ms. Artastic podcast or vlog, depending on how you are choosing to either listen or both listen and watch me right now. Um, but in this episode, I'm going to be diving in on three of the best watercolor painting art activities that you will do in your art classroom. And guess what? Yes! I have also designed for you a free printable watercolor painting technique template that you can print off and start with in your classroom. So easy and you gotta stay tuned and listen because I'm gonna tell you how to get that. So let's dive into it. You're listening to the Miss Artastic Podcast. Inspiration for art teachers. Here's your host, Kathleen McGivern. Well, like I said, we are going to be talking about, or I'm at least going to be talking about, uh, three of the best watercolor painting art activities or art lessons to do with your art classroom to start with if you are doing a watercolor unit. These are the three best ones. And yes, there will be a free printable template to download. So if you are listening to this on a podcast player in the description of the podcast, so in the description of this episode, there's going to be a link there that says blog post show notes. Click that link, my lovely friend. And um, it's going to take you to my blog, misartastic.com. If you scroll down to where it says watercolor painting techniques, there is going to be a lovely orange button there for you to click and it's going to help you download that printable. Um, if you are currently watching this on YouTube on my vlog episode, then you can um, in the YouTube description below the video, click the little arrow to expand the description and then again it'll say blog post show notes. Click the link and it's going to take you over to the Ms. Artastic blog, which is my hub. And if you're not sus subscribing to it, my friend, you really need to get on that because there are so many art ideas, tips, all that jazz, huge archive of things and content for you to get going on. Um, yeah, so check it out. Um, as well, um, if you are watching this right on my blog right now, just keep lis uh, well, listen or scroll down and you'll find the resource eventually. Okay, so here we go. Um, so watercolor painting, in my opinion, is one of the most versatile and effective ways to get your students painting and engaged in the art making process. So we're going to be diving in on three of the best, again, watercolor painting art activities to start off with in your art classroom, which will be technique exploration, ink and paint artworks, and observational fruit still life paintings. Oh yeah. All right. So keep reading because I have a free watercolor painting technique template again available to download in the blog post. So here we go. So the first one is to experiment with a range of watercolor techniques with your students. So before you start any bigger projects with your students, it's always best to get them experimenting with watercolor painting techniques. And honestly, it doesn't matter what age or the experience they have had with watercolors in the past, okay? Anytime you start a unit with watercolor paints, Start with experimenting with techniques and watercolors. Oh yes. I'm going to say that again. It's so important, my lovely friend. Anytime you start a unit with watercolor paints, start with experimenting with different watercolor painting techniques. And this is why I've placed emphasis on this printable that is a technique printable, okay, where they can explore right on there. But you can also have them create grids or things in their sketchbooks where they'll extend, um, experiment that on as well. Okay, so as artists, we learn so much about how an art medium is used by us and how it reacts through experimenting and seeing what works and what simply doesn't work. As well, one time you might hate dry brush techniques, but a year later you've totally forgotten about it, totally forgot about the experience, and you try it again and realize that you can get some interesting texture with dry brush techniques. 
What I'm saying is, is that you should never, ever turn away the opportunity for artists to play and try things out for themselves. And it doesn't matter if they are in kindergarten or high school. Start with this, but make it again, make sense for that age. Okay. So the expectations for somebody in kindergarten, I would say would be like a max at try three different techniques. That could be a lot for those kids, but someone in high school can create uh, an in-depth multi-page exploration on watercolor paper, um, on little samplings of watercolor papers that they then um, glue into their sketchbook or directly into their sketchbook itself. Okay, so same activity, but you are changing the expectation for the individual artist. Okay, so um, as well, kids might not like art as much in grade six, but then, well, I know that's hard to say, <laughs> but then all of a sudden in grade seven, it's like their thing. So even if you teach the kids for years in a row, start here because the way they're going to approach it is going to, they're going to have different mindsets in every year. They might not remember it. And also it's, it's watercolor paints. It's never, ever, ever going to be the same results every same every single time it will never be the same okay and you they might just do something in a little bit different way or maybe they're like they went and did happy art and now all of a sudden they're doing kind of grunge lowbrow style and suddenly one tech techniques that they used to like really no longer apply to the message that they are conveying and now suddenly techniques that they didn't like before are a lot more interesting for example okay so that's why we're going to do this all the time um, obviously that would be a, a upper level thinking, <laughs> not so much in kindergarten. We're just having fun, um, play based learning really. Okay. So enough about my rambling on why I really need you to start with exploring watercolor painting techniques. So let's get into a list of which ones to explore. So first would be wet on wet painting, um, water down the paper. And then paint wet paint onto wet paper. And this is an important technique, again, for developing textures exclusive to watercolor paints um, and for creating and developing beautiful gradients that can be used for water, for your background and your landscape, so many different things. Um, it can also be used if you're a cut paper artist and you like to do watercolor papers with lots of beautiful uh, wet on wet painting and then some people do like snippings of paper and cut it and then glue it and assemble creations that way. Beautiful, my friend. This is the this is the technique you need. Um, next would be to do a wet on dry painting to see the difference, okay? It sounds basic like, oh, wet on wet, wet on dry. It's so similar. It's not. It's a very, very different animal. Wet on wet, the, the medium does its own thing once the paint touches that water on the surface of the paper. Wet on dry produces crisp lines and more um, predictable results. Just don't let the colors touch. So teach the kids to leave a little paper border between colors, otherwise it will get bleed outs. But what I say is sometimes the medium just wants to do its own thing and you just gotta let it happen because that's the truth. <laughs> um, but uh, for me, I really like the bleed outs a little bit because I mean that is the nature of watercolor paints. It's like ceramics. Sometimes the clay does its own thing in the kiln. <laughs> okay, so the next is a sponge. You could use sponge to apply um, paint and to lift off paint <laughs> to create texture. So you can dab, you can apply wet on wet and then lift off paint and that will leave a texture like erasing almost right we can draw with erasers on graphite right that makes a mark so it's another way of making a mark okay so salt would be so applying salt onto wet watercolor paint and then let it dry mm -hmm. okay you're gonna notice as soon as you put that salt on there that it's going the paint is going to be drawn towards those salt crystals and of course that will create texture as it dries. Um, and then I like to rub the salt off completely. When it's 100% dry, don't do this before then. Leave it overnight at least. Um, try experimenting with fine and coarse salt. You're gonna get different results. Um, my preference, my personal preference, I, I like the texture from coarse salt. You do you. <laughs> okay. Thick 
and thin. So you can experiment with the kids creating thick and thin lines, right? That's going to be all through mastering the paintbrush. Okay, this is my very worn down um, bamboo paintbrush, natural hairs. It used to be a full paintbrush, but it's down to, <laughs> it's been worn down, but this has lasted me like 15 years. By the way, these are amazing. Um, so I can make a lot of marks with just this paintbrush and often I just use one or two paintbrushes in my, I have all the sizes because of course, as artists, we collect literally everything, even if we don't need it. But do I ever use these little guys? No, I don't. I use like, honestly, these are my two favorite and I, you can control the paint by Again, pressing firmly makes a big difference versus pressing very lightly will make a nice small hairline. Same brush, you control it as an artist. Um, that would be something more to talk about with younger students unless you have some older students who have absolutely no experience creating. <laughs> then that would be something to just demonstrate with everybody or you a refresher for the whole room. Okay, next is to do um, texture making. So dabbing wet watercolor paint on paper um, with either bubble wrap, cling wrap, and aluminum foil to create interesting textures. And this great, works great on a wash background. Next, you can do the same thing, dabbing and lifting paint off using tissue paper. But I have also done it with that school grade brown paper towels. You know what I'm talking about, the ones that absorb literally nothing. You have to use a whole roll to clean up a mess. Those stiff, scratchy um, paper towels, use them to dab and lift. Same idea. They have one purpose. <laughs> okay, resist painting. You can use wax crayon or oil pastel and draw lines first and or designs, color in areas. Um, leave areas blank and then apply paint on top for resist effects and then use white to create lines where the paper will show through. So that's going to use white oil pastel or um, wax crayon. It's kind of like masking uh, and it's going to leave a nice clean-ish line that's going to stay white. And so kids, especially primaries, get really excited. They can't really see their white and then you put that paint on top and boom, it pops and they're like, what? That's crazy. So it's especially good if you're doing ghosts or spider webs in Halloween time. Just saying. Okay. Um, next and final idea is for techniques is using either rubbing alcohol or isopropyl alcohol and lemon juice. Dripping that onto the wet painted paper to, will create some amazing textures. So check it out. It does some fabulous things, pushes mediums around. It's a great way to manipulate the medium. So to grab the free printable watercolor painting technique template, because I know that you're prepping literally everything for your classroom and that is a ton of work. And so I'm here to make your life easier. So make sure that you grab this free watercolor technique template here um, in the blog post show notes. Again, the link for the blog post show notes is either in the description of the podcast or the description of the YouTube video or scroll down on the blog post, if you're currently on misertastic.com and you will find it, it's a big orange button. It says free printable um, watercolor painting techniques. And then I also have a video there showing how to use it, which um, you can play in your classroom if you want or watch it for yourself to learn how to do it. Um, but I always recommend if like in my um, art teacher membership or some of the, even some of the resources on my TPT store, they are video art tutorials. So you can see every single step broken down, down into achievable ways, full on. There's no breaks. I never really edit them that much. Um, so like you will just watch me do it from start to finish in like 30 to 40 minutes, the whole thing, the whole thing. And I, love to show all the process and break it down and use terminology. And really, I like to teach it as though I'm teaching kids. So one, it's modeling for you. If you like to teach your own lessons, same with this YouTube video. If you like to teach your own lessons, this is a great model for you. So I'm modeling the lesson for you. Or alternatively, it also works either 
through Artastic Collective Art Teacher Curriculum at artasticcollective.com or in my Teachers Pay Teacher Store, Ms. Artastic. It also works as a video that you can play and stream on the website, either on artasticcollective.com or TPT, and you can stream it. And then while I'm teaching in the video, obviously, um, you can be supporting the class. Um, I've even, when I taught, I would also play my own videos because I could hit pause, hit rewind, but then I would be supporting kids or sometimes I would also model on top of that way. That, that way students are seeing it in two ways. And also it works really well if you have students who have been away because you can just pause me, rewind, and that's why I liked even using my own videos. <laughs> because sometimes I just needed to like I would still demo but I would pause I would rewind and I can't do that live and honestly the kids are so drawn into the videos so that way I knew I was grabbing everybody's attention even though I was doing both but anyways back to this um, you can get the same video idea. I'll be demonstrating how to use the printable and some watercolor painting techniques um, so you can play it in your classroom or use it as modeling for yourself. So that way when you go to teach it, you'll know how to teach it. That is the beauty. But yeah, so you go download that in um, uh, misertastic.com blog post show notes. Um, if you go to below the description of the video in the YouTube vlog or in the pod podcast description, you'll find it there. Okay, so next idea is to do watercolor painting with ink and paint. And now this may say it sound simple, but I got a twist in there. So just listen and hear me out. All right, so one technique that I love in my own personal practice, so this is super great lesson for upper elementary all the way up to high school, is to draw with permanent fine tip marker first, then paint. Or you can flip it, paint first, then draw around it and fill in the details. Yes. Okay. <laughs> so yeah, when the paper's fully dry, so you paint first and then when that paper's fully dry, you take that fine tip marker and you make more other marks layering on top of the paint. And you can follow the outlines or create another image within it. So yes. Um, or here's my suggestion suggestion is to do both. Maybe the students choose an image to create and have to create it twice. So they have to create that image, whatever they have selected to create, they gotta do it twice. First painting, then, sorry, first drawing, then painting, right? So first permanent marker with paint on top. Then on the second piece of paper, and you can always, if you're not, if you're like, oh, that's a lot of watercolor paper, cut the paper in half, cut it, cut it, cut it, cut it. They get one paper still, they're just doing two smaller samples of experimentations. That is my suggestion there. Um, it doesn't always have to be big. You can, it's an experiment and we are, are un learning and understanding the medium and different processes. So we don't have to do it big. Also, artists don't always create large. They, they can create, there's no rules. It is art. Work outside the expectations of what we think we're supposed to do. There's no rules. Do what you want. Okay, so, um, Cut it in half if you need to. Um, so then on the second piece of paper, they paint the subject first and then draw their lines on top when it's perfectly dry. Um, I guarantee you the results will be shockingly different and it will really push your students to be creative and forced into creative thinking and experimentation. So neither will produce predictable results because, because of the nature of the medium, which makes this totally fabulous, especially for high school students who don't want to step outside their comfort zones. You're not going to be able to remain in that comfort zone. You might be able to for the marker first and paint, but at some point you're going to be, they're going to be pushed. All right. Finally, watercolor for your observational drawings. So cut up some paper into squares, like a one-to-one -one ratio or like Instagram style picture a square. Like why? Well, it's trendy and who cares? The kids. It's relatable to them. <laughs> that is it. Um, tell them we're making Insta-worthy artworks. That is your hook. Okay, so use it. Um, but also it is a different proportion or canvas size to work with and you can easily apply the rule of thirds to it. So again, Insta-worthy. 
So next, provide fruit or vegetables or have kids bring one in to each table or individual. Um, so if you are a full-time art teacher, do this with all your classes. Like plan, like if you're doing watercolor paints, you're doing watercolor painting units with everyone. We're not doing um, acrylic painting, then you have to re-prep and then do watercolor painting, then re-prep and clean and do ceramics. Somehow work it in where at least nearly every single one, or if not, all your classes are all working on watercolor paints. And then that way, but you don't have to put them away. Just tidy up the center of the tables and remake them organized. That is a job for the next class. Um, and by, I say retidy, I mean the students are retidying, not you. <laughs> that is their responsibility. Um, it's part of being an artist is we have to be um, respectful of our own mediums. And it's not jobs, it's just that everybody pitches in. That is it, and no one leaves until then. <laughs> I'm just kidding. <laughs> but am I? I don't know. Um, so anyways, uh, no, I'm just kidding. Um, so what we're going to be doing is having each student create a still life artwork of the fruit or veggie using their watercolor paints. So set it up. You can even put blank paper below it so that it has a clean background and you can see the shadows more easily. Um, and then have them do a still life painting of that fruit or vegetable um, using any of the techniques that they have learned as a show what you know, while also experimenting with observational skills and drawing, but more like observational still life painting. So if this is upper high school, like seniors, have them make two to three images by having them rotate through the tables instead of moving the piece, still life pieces. So instead of being like, okay, let's all move the still life and the fruit. I mean, you could, or you can move the kids. It depends, I guess, really on how complicated your still life area or your workstation is. Um, and don't move the paints. So again, it really depends on like your mediums, your still lifes, your tables, your how old the kids are. But it, yeah, it's just an idea to think about. Um, anyways, I highly recommend that you rotate them and especially with the older kids, you can rotate them every 15 or 20 minutes, put on a timer, um, or depends on again, how much time you have, how big the blocks are, or you can always do it over multiple classes. And again, I highly, highly recommend this experimentation and art lesson. And I think that everyone will love the results. Will absolutely love the results so check that one out i think that you are really going to find that it's a success so um but yeah basically keep your table set up the best that you can and then when you're ready you can get going on teaching that one um so if again they're seniors again two to three images rotate the tables through them every 15 20 minutes um and then if it does, it, listen, some kids are going to have amazing results and some of them might not have amazing results. And that is, well, the unpredictability of watercolor paints. So if it doesn't work out for all students, I bet that they're still, they still will have learned so much about that art medium, even if the colors accidentally I mean, maybe, maybe they moved the um paper or tilted it or used way too much water and it all touched and ran together and became into or turned into a multicolor blob i mean i bet that they still learned so much about what to and to not do right it's just about it's art and that is really just how we learn all right, so that is it for this episode. Again, make sure that you hit the blog post show notes and then find the free principle download and video for teaching the watercolor techniques. This is Ms. Artastic signing out. Thank you so much for watching this episode. Please make sure that you hit that like button and subscribe to this channel so I can continue to make amazing art lessons for you. Oh yeah. Well, if you are an art educator or a teacher and you're looking for some cool art lessons for your classroom, no matter what 
kind of teacher you are for any grade, check out the Ms. Artastic Teachers Pay Teachers Store. There I have over 700 art lessons and of course it's always growing and transforming. So make sure you check it out frequently. But it's the Ms. Artastic Teachers Pay Teachers Store and you're gonna find art lessons that are fully planned and easy to use. And you're gonna find some cool art activities to use for all the seasons, all the holidays, and so much more. You're gonna find amazing art lessons that are integrating the seasons, the holidays, elements of art, principles of design, and art history, and so much more, my friends. It's a fabulous resource, so check it out. If you're looking for some awesome art ideas for your classroom, you can head on over to teacherspayteachers.com. In that search bar, just click it, and you can type in Ms. Artastic, same as this YouTube channel. There I am, you can click that, and that's gonna bring you to this page. And you can navigate it a variety of ways. You can go down, scroll, and see what's new. Um, these are usually my featured products that are usually brand new. Or if you go down to the side here, you're gonna find the categories of different things. You can click Artivity Books to find my art um, activity books that are fully integrated with the elements and principles. You can find artists and art history, art sub resources, back to school, Christmas, distance learning, and so much more principles of design. Here it's all organized for different themes or the holidays and seasons or types of learning, including sketchbooks and social emotional learning and all of the above. So make sure you check it out, Ms. Artastic on Teachers Pay Teachers, and thank you so much for watching. I'm Ms. Artastic, signing out.